Today we're looking at a ShopBot Buddy. Uh, it comes in two different widths. You can get it 32 inches wide or 48 inches wide. And then what you'll find interesting about a Buddy is the table moves back and forth on these machines and you're able to put different length power sticks on. So this one here has a two foot cutting length where you could increase it up to eight foot with the eight foot power stick. So the Buddy's a little bit different. The table moves back and forth. And again, you have a 32 inch or a 48 inch width, and then uh, the back and forth you can add it up to 8 foot. Here I'm just showing you with the keypad, I'm going to move the table back and forth. So you want to make sure you've got room on both sides of your machine when you're using the buddy, because the table is going to be moving back and forth. So your ShopBot Buddy comes fully assembled, and you uncrate it, you follow along with the manual, and it'll instruct you on how to plug it into your PC computer. Uh, the first thing I like to do with a buddy, a new buddy, is um, zero it out, put a V-bit in it, and I actually like to carve right into the spoil board that comes with it, the table. And I like to carve out the footprint of my cutting area. That way I know where my zero zero point is on the actual table and cut that out. So what I'll do here is just run the software, the ShopBot 3 software, uh, and again your manual will show you how to open this all up and connect it and I'm just running my C3 command which is my zeroing my X and my Y uh, proximity switches and it's going and those are all preset because your buddy comes fully assembled and then I've got a V60 degree in there depending on what kind of V bit you have and you can see I've already cut it in there once just so you can see what I was about to do before I run the video but here I am now zeroing the Z getting it where it needs to be so that the bit is zeroed X, Y, and Z. And what we're going to do here is just go into VCarve Pro or Aspire and create ourselves a rectangle that's the cutting surface for the buddy. And then we'll take this bit now that our machine has been zeroed and we'll carve that in there. And I now know that I have my zero zero down here in the bottom corner. Uh, and the way these spoil boards come on a buddy is there is extra space all the way around. And that allows you to do uh, jigging and clamping. But now I know I can just take a board and, and line it up by eye right above my zero zero and screw it down if I need to cut. So again, just an option you can take. Okay, so the next thing I do is I've opened up my VCar Pro. Some of you might be Aspire users, some of you with older machines that might actually be called part, part works. Um, but what I need to do now is make sure I know the size of my buddy. Is it a 32 inch wide or a 48 inch wide? The buddy I currently have here is 32 inches wide. So I'm going to go and create a new file and I know that my buddy is 32 inches in the beam but I have to remember which way that is with my X or my Y so make sure you go look out at your machine and orient it. Uh, the standard power stick that comes on both the 32 inch and the 48 inch buddy allows you to cut two foot deep so there's 24 inches and that's back and forth in the X and since mine only has a 32 inch in the Y I'm gonna type in 32 right here so there's the actual size of my cutting area on my buddy. And what I'm going to do here is just create a rectangle, do a profile toolpath, and then that's what we'll go back out on the machine and cut. Uh, the Xterra that I get is an inch thick. It doesn't need to be exact because we're not cutting through. I do want to zero to the top because I'm going to cut right into the spoil board. So I'm zeroing to the top of my spoil board. That's actually my material is my spoil board for this cut and then I'll accept this and nothing more here than just going in and creating a draw rectangle I'm gonna make my bottom at zero zero and the width again is on my buddy on your buddy unless you have a longer power stick it's 24 inches and the Y direction for my buddy's a 32 some of yours may be a 48 and there I've just created a line you can't really see it because it's right on the edge of my material surface but when I zoom I can see in that the pink right there and what I'll do with that highlighted it just create a simple profile tool path just give it a little bit of you know just a little something so you can see 0.02 depth uh, you know with this desktop you get a sh you know I'm sorry with the buddy you get a shot bot starter kit you get the 60 degree bit you could use whatever other V bit but I want to make sure I have it on the line so I center that V on the line and I'm not going to worry about any uh, ramps or anything right now and I'm just gonna call this my table layout ok 
calculate it. You're not really going to see a whole lot with the preview. Uh, you can sit here and mess around with it, but what you really got going on is you just got a little line going around the edge. Um, and then for this guy here, I would just save this out. And I've got my 60 degree bit. And then again, always you know measure twice, cut once, go back, make sure your Z is in the right spot, and you're cutting to the right depth. And then you just want to go out to the buddy and load up this file. And what it's going to do is cut this profile all around into your spoil board, and you'll see what your table size is. All right, here we are back at the machine, and I'm over at my computer doing a file part load in the ShopBot 3 software, and I'm loading up that file that we just created in our Vectric software, and again, it's just doing a profile around. And you know, your best thing before you even do this cut is open up the keypad in the control software and just move the machine around, get a feeling for it using your arrow keys or your mouse, and that'll help you start understanding which direction it's going to mach machine. And you'll also see cut into the spoil board from ShopBot is the X and Y with the arrow pointing in the direction so you can see which way it's going. So it just makes a profile around. Also you can put I've also put in here where it says zero zero so I knew where my zero routine uh, my zero zero corner was. And this just makes it really nice for us. Uh, I now know where I can uh, place down my material. I can line it up with my zero zero so do a profile line, add some text if you want to put the zero zero play around with which directions are X, which directions are Y, and it's just a nice little layout grid to have on your buddy top. All right, another thing we need to do for setting up our buddy is we need to surface the table flat. Uh, this Xterra is an exterior grade MDF, and it is, uh, it is quite flat across there, but if you really wanted to get your your table bed dialed in perfectly flat you're gonna wanna surface it and then you'll find yourself you know surfacing it several times throughout the year depending on you know humidity temperature change where the MD or the exterior or MDF can expand or contrast with the different weather and moisture conditions and, and just one of the things the CNC is um, the you know the more you have your machine dialed in the more accurate the cut you're gonna get so I like to surface this buddy top and get a nice flat top exactly the, that I know is exactly flat from the spindle or router. Um, one route is you could go right here and create your surfacing file and surface into the deck. What happens, I found, is the more you surface down into the deck, the deeper it gets down into this actual Xterra. And again, since you only can cut with inside this rectangle, I found surfacing it a lot gets you down deep inside of it because you're only cutting inside the rectangle where this now outside of the rectangle becomes a higher surface and it's harder to mount longer boards so if you have a board bigger than the uh, cutting surface it overhangs a little maybe you're just detailing you know a little section of a sign or a larger rail uh, and you need it to hang out the front of the back it's not quite so I'm going to show you a trick that will allow us to do uh, a temporary uh, spoil board on top of the Xterra so I simply just uh, created a piece of MDF that was exactly uh, 24 by 32 since I know where my grid is on the tabletop now you could use I use I happen to have MDF I you know had some type on two and just really soaked it in there uh, seen people do it with construction adhesive as well you're just gonna get that glued on there good and I'm gluing it right onto the top and people might go oh what if you need to take it off the stick Yada yada yada. I mean, there's an option of having a, a, a second stick. Um, I could always just machine it off. I could machine the screw holes in it. Uh, I don't plan on taking it off, so this works for me. Uh, I'm just going to line that back up. And I even go to the point of I got to let the glue hold under clamping pressure, so I'm going to take and run some screws in it right now. And once the glue's set up, I'll, that's when I'll go ahead and take the screws back out. But now I've created a higher lip. Yes, I've lost three quarter inches in the Z, but now I can machine this thing flat, and it will be up above the regular deck. And then I can just work my way down as it gets to narrow. I can glue on another one. But now I'm not setting myself down inside of a hole as far as where my rest of my cutting surface is. And then here we've got a few other things you, you need to put together um, when you get your buddy. The first thing here is that you got to hook up your dust collector. If we're going to machine this down flat and get a nice surface, the MDF or the Xterra is pretty dusty. So install your dust foot, 
this stuff will be in your manual as well. Um, the dust foot, and I'm touching the arm up here that I'm going to hook my dust collector to. Uh, I just have a four inch hose here. I'm going to hang it depending on the different, you know, depending on your shop, there's different ways of hanging it up. I'll show you a few options here. Uh, you know, on this buddy, I got a nice tall ceiling. I'm just going to hang it with, with a rope. I got a bungee hanging it off there, going over to a dust collector. Uh, here's a little arm. This works when you don't have a high ceiling to hang things from. And then here, you know, this one's hard piped in. So there's different options uh, for dust collection. Uh, you know, the key is to keep from having too many bends or kinks. A nice flow is what you're looking for in the hose. Once your glue set and you removed your screws, you're going to want to create a flattening file because we do need to surface this. I like to go right back to the Vectric software. Here's my file from before that I did my profile on the line. Um, so I got that rectangle I just highlighted it. Remember that I had a rectangle there that was 24 by 32. Earlier we did a profile on the line around and all I need to do now is a pocket. I like to create a nice surfacing file like this that I can keep and save on my desktop and that way I can refer to it whenever I need to re-zero it. Uh, if I was to just surface this right now the size that it is and I had a bit that was only an inch and a quarter say in diameter I'm not going to be able to surface that little corner. So what I like to do with this here is I'm going to delete my circle and I'll just take my rectangle, come down here to the offset and just tell it to offset out, oh, I say you could go a quarter of an inch. Your machine has a little bit of play to go outside of the, the negative X and the negative Y. So with that quarter of an inch out, I'll now have that vector selected and then that's where I'll do my pocket tool path. Uh, I like to do a .02 for surface. Uh, if you buy the desktop, if you buy the starter kit, you get a one and a quarter spoil board bit. It's a nice, uh, bigger diameter, surface it faster. Uh, and then again, I'm just going to, I would call this my point O2 buddy surface. So I have that calculated. You know, again in preview, I run it that way. I can make sure I see that I'm getting my corners. <coughs> And that's what I'm doing is I'm just creating a pocket. I'm just flattening it. I got my little corners because I did my offset. And then I would take this file here, this .02 buddy surface, and I'm going to save that right to my desktop so I have that for later use. And then whenever I need to use it, I can go back to my buddy, and all I have to do is do my Z0 plate, zero to the top, and then rerun the file. Alright, so here we are loading up our .02 file, and I'm going to start running it, and it's just going to pocket that top. I've zeroed my zero plate to the top, and I'm just cutting down this machine bed so I have a nice flat table surface. And I'll do this several times throughout the year as it either gets chewed up or as temperature changes, just so I know I'm working on a nice flat surface. But here's the reason why I show you how important it is to do this. Watch my hand here, where there's hardly any lip there, and there's a little bit of a lip there. What's going on here is this table isn't quite flat because, you know, material thickness varies. So it is a very good idea of what I'm doing here of machining this. N seeing that it's doing only a little bit there and more over here, I'm going to rerun this thing. Because as you can see here, I'm not, I'm not exactly hitting. So I'll let this file completely finish and then I'll get my Z0 plate back out and I'll find the low spot here and I'll re-zero it and then rerun the file. And then this is just some tips and tricks to get you going with your buddy. Uh, you can see here why zeroing is important. This is a nice helpful tip for getting you up off there. Yeah, you do lose a little bit in the Z. If you're not worried about that, it's a nice, uh, it's a nice way to get around it. You can um, zero and machine down into your Xterra deck. Some people do that option. I'm just showing you some things that have worked here for me. Um, but this will hopefully get you going on your first couple cuts for your buddy, and then look for uh, more buddy videos to be coming in the future. Thank you.